Hey everyone, it's Alex Morcate with realestateshorts.com. Today we're going to address that age old question, not really, of what's the difference between internal rate of return and cap rate. We're going to describe how they're similar, how they're different, and how they're applied together. Let's get into it. All right, so first things first, whenever we're talking about any return metric, I think it's best to consider and remember that in and of themselves, they are great, but when used in isolation, they are poor. In other words, trying to make an investment decision based on only one return metric is probably poor practice and ill-advised. It's like trying to decide if you like a meal simply by the way it looks and not the way it smells or tastes. And so in combination, a lot of these return metrics go a long way to help you understand whether an investment opportunity is good or bad. So keeping that disclaimer in mind, we're going to explore how these two return metrics are different, how they could be similar, but maybe more importantly, how can you can use both of them together at the same time to help make good investment choice. So first, how are they different? They're different in a lot of ways. So in this table, we illustrate some of the key arguments either for or against either one of these return metrics. So I think the first top of mind answer for most folks in favor of cap rate is that it's easy. You can do it in your head. Most oftentimes you don't even need a calculator. You can just come back and say, I think it's about 7%, 8%. You can do the math in your head quickly and you can apply it easily. I think another pro or check mark in favor of the cap rate is that it is used universally as a means to estimate what a future sales price could be. So if you're ever getting into a debate or if you're ever speaking or reviewing to an appraiser or one of their reports, a lender, a consultant, another investor, oftentimes you'll find them saying what they think they can sell the property for in the future and they'll be using the cap rate to do it. Next, I think, is maybe how they're middle, like where do they intersect in that? Yes, both of them account for operating expenses. Both of them account for vacancy. Now, what about certain concessions like free rent? They both do. But I think after that, that's where IRR starts to kind of edge ahead a little bit in that it is a bit more inclusive. The trade off, however, is that by being a more inclusive unit of measure, it's also a bit more complicated. So does it account for below the line items like leverage, tenant improvement allowance, leasing commissions, capital improvements? Yes, it does. Does it account for future growth in rent or expenses? Yes, it does. Is it a more comprehensive return measure because it includes what you will eventually sell the property for? Yes, it does. And does it account for time as all these previous items would imply? It does. And so IRR, I think, again, edges ahead in that it is a time weighted. It looks at the future and all the implications of growth and assumptions of the future. It also looks below the line. So all of these factors that are so prevalent in real estate, like debt and leasing and capital costs. So overall, I think IRR is the more comprehensive unit of measure. That's never to say that that should be the only unit of measure. So now let's dive into how you can use these two together in conjunction with each other to help make choices. So in this case, first things first, the cap rate could be used as a going in unit of measure. So it can help you confirm that purchase price. So if you're like many investors, you're evaluating a lot of opportunities and you're saying no to the vast majority of them because IRR is a bit more complicated to calculate, at least in that it requires you to put more effort into estimating what the future could look like. Cap rate's easier. And so you could take a look at many, many opportunities and quickly eliminate those that don't meet that first threshold of performance. Next, cap rate is going to be crucial in driving your estimate of internal rate of return because it helps set or determine that future sales price. 
So in this case, the one and a half million dollars was calculated by looking at that estimate of cap rate in the future. Without the cap rate included in this estimate, you would never get there to begin with. So IRR is very much dependent on the cap rate. And many would argue that IRR is driven at least in large part by, if not the majority of its return comes from, the selection of the cap rate of the, in the future. So for argument's sake, if I chose a higher cap rate, I'll say 7%, it has a substantive impact on internal rate of return, declining from 14 and change to a hair over 9%. So what does this really mean for you? Putting a lot of thought and effort into estimating what that future cap rate will be will help you determine what that IRR estimate will be. So now that we've addressed cap rate, the IRR helps round out the total picture. So if cap rate can help you define or at least eliminate a lot of the options, narrow your focus to a handful of investment opportunities, and help you confirm that initial unlevered year one rate of return, then it will also help you determine the starting point for determining the future cap rate, and then therefore the total sales price and ultimately global total cash flows across the entire investment horizon. So what this really means for you is it's difficult to kind of use one without the other, or at the very least, difficult to employ IRR without already thinking about cap rate. But when used together, they're that much more powerful. Think about the pure definition of synergy where one plus one equals three. Being able to refine and narrow investment alternatives saves you a lot of time. Being able to make intelligent estimates of what you can think the, you can sell the property for in the future will help you determine global investment performance and therefore eliminate options further with an IRR measure. So to recap, there are many differences between them. Cap rate being a snapshot point in time that ignores growth below the line items, leverage, and overall total investment return. While IRR may make up for some of these deficiencies, it is not without its limitations, some of the biggest of which mean, or at least imply, that you have to make a lot of assumptions and the calculations a bit more involved. But keep in mind, when used together, your investment recommendations or decisions will be that much more well-informed. So if you found this video helpful, there are a handful of others that I would recommend you take a look at. And as always, if you have any comments, questions, or feedback, we'd love to hear from you. Look forward to talking to you.